Welcome to our webinar on how to be up to date with the CBC challenges and risk analysis. Today, we are pleased to present you the newly developed TP Global Platform Suite 2020. We will explain how it works together with Palantir to assure that the information presented in your CBC report is aligned with your operating and governance models, presenting a consistent storyline. The speakers for today are going to be Peter Holly from Palantir in Sweden and Maria Grigorieva from TPA Global in the Netherlands. Should you have any questions during the webinar, please type it into the question chat box and we will answer you at the end of the presentation. Now I give the floor to Maria. Uh, hello, everybody. And uh, thank you for joining our today's webinar. As uh, Gaia mentioned, we're going to discuss uh, today TPA's Global Solutions Suite 2020. Uh, and then I will give floor to our uh, partner, volunteer, who will uh, guide you the TBC reporting and how to make it fine through the use of software. So, Suite 2020 is a newly developed TPA global solution uh, that uh, started its uh, story last year when we uh, looked at tax technology uh, from a, a very uh, inter integral position. Uh, we were wondering uh, that uh, companies are struggling either to use technology or are struggling to choose it, uh, and uh, or if they've chosen it, struggling to implement it because the solution is just not right for them. Uh, in the light of this, we developed our solution and call it Suite 2020, and that means we combined solutions uh, that are suitable for exact uh, company and for exact. Uh, and the solution effectively means that we help our clients uh, to select uh, relevant software uh, to fit their needs. Uh, for this purpose, we uh, are partnering with uh, various uh, software providers, including Valent. And uh, of course, you uh, can understand the benefits of this suite where you don't need to talk to one provider and uh, fit. Uh, the software somehow into uh, your purpose, but rather choose the, uh, something that uh, already fits you. Uh, also, we are uh, quite knowledgeable ourselves uh, with the software and we know how to use it and how to implement it in the best way. Uh, in addition, we can support you with the governance around software because sometimes software is perfect, but your team is just uh, not organized in the right way to use it. Last but not least, of course, our solution helps to save you time in the production and compliance, and of course, it helps you to save costs in a long-term period. Uh, so, uh, Suite 2020 combines capabilities for tax planning, transfer pricing, tax provisioning, tax compliance, and tax controversy. And our partner, Palantir, uh, is uh, representing uh, uh, three capabilities of the suit in tax planning, transfer pricing, and tax provisioning. So we can say that uh, TPA Global and Palantir are best of both worlds, being tax and transfer pricing and software world. And of course, uh, this helps you to make a choice based on your needs and purpose. And I will now give floor to our partner, Palantir, who will uh, tell more about their solutions uh, and how to use them effectively for your purposes. Thanks, Maria. Um, I'm Peter Rowling from Palantir. I will start with a very short introduction of myself and uh, Palantir before I do the actual presentation of our solution. Palantir was founded in 1989 and we developed solutions for the tax and legal department of large multinationals. Uh, one uh, module in our platform is the country by country reporting solution, which is what I will focus on in today's presentation. A few words on myself is that I've been with Palantir for five years now, and uh, prior to that, I held various tax and accounting roles in a number of multinationals. On this call, I also have my colleague, Lena Franciston, with me, who is a former tax partner at uh, PwC with experience from information management and uh, tax compliance. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
Um, I will start with a high level description of the solution in a few slides before I show the actual solution for you. Uh, in short, the CYC solution will help you to collect data from various sources, validate that data is correct and complete, and analyze it to, or to identify risk. And finally, it will help you to convert it to the required XML format. Next slide, please. Uh, and with the solution, you can manage many of the important processes in a tax department, from setting up a new process to appointing roles and responsibilities to people within your organization as well as to external advisors. And after having collected the required data, you may review it in overviews and in our analysis tools. And with Palantir, you can also easily scale up the system to include other processes such as uh, tax risk management and uh, legal entity management. Next slide, please. The solution is easy to implement, includes many useful tools and has been used by multinationals for over 25 years. And the solution includes support for risk analysis according to the OECD handbook on risk assessment, including visual analysis. And Palantir has been verified by tax authorities in more than 10 countries and has inbuilt support for corrections between years, which is something that will become important now in 2018. Uh, before I show you the solution, I will present one slide which describes the steps in the CYC process with the combined TPA and Palantir approach. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here you see the five steps in the CYC process. And the first step here is uh, the setup of the solution. Here you decide what figures you would like to collect, set thresholds, and add KPIs, which are relevant for your group. Then we establish a process and res uh, appoint responsible people for our three basic processes, which are entity information, business activities, and relevant C by C figures. Uh, and the next step is the, the collection of data. Here, the Talentier platform will automate part of the work and support an efficient data collection process. In the third step, Palantir validates the collected data to screen for missing information and support your review process. Uh, the next step is the analysis to identify risk. Here, Palantir can support risk analysis according to the OECD handbook on risk assessment. And the last step is the, the automatic conversion to the OECD XML format. And it is important to stress here that, it, uh, that in order to set up a strong process, you need both software and trying to pricing people with knowledge of tax management software. And that is why CPA and Palantir has this joint offering. Uh, I will now show you the different steps in the solution as well. Uh, could you please hand over the presentation to me? Perfect, thanks. <clears throat> so when you start using the Palantir solution, we will help you to migrate your existing data into our solution. And that could be uh, all your entities and basic entity information, uh, which you have in Excel or in another system. And it can be previously filed XML files that we can upload to, to Palantir to have all your data in one place. Uh, and after that, we identify where you can find all data going forward, if it's centrally or locally located. And after that, we set up the system accordingly to help you re um, retrieve the required data. And the three data collection processes you need to manage are entity information and the important changes of that in information over time, and business activities and changes of that information over time and your C by C figures. And uh, it's also important to know that these three processes might be handled differently. 
for instance, getting hold of entity information and business activities might require local input, uh, but the C by C figures you might have centrally uh, in your group accounting system and you would like to manage those centrally. So that, that's important to, to figure out where you have the information and who, who is responsible for it. Uh, and after that step, you appoint responsible people for the three data collection processes, as well as people who review and administer the system. And when that is done, you are ready to start your process. So I will start uh, by uh, giving you an overview of the different parts of the system. Uh, to the left here, you have the menu. And the first uh, menu item is the dashboard. Here you get an overview of the information in the current reporting period. Uh, and now I'm logged on as a super administrator, so I will see all information. Had I logged on as an editor responsible only for a few entities, I had only seen information that was relevant for me. Uh, the second section here is what we call corporate information. And this is the first process where you need to collect information about your legal entities and basic entity information such as the TIN numbers. Uh, the third part is the best 13 information and the country by country reporting process. And then we have an overview for sign offs and, and warning flags, which I will come back to uh, soon. And then we have some special reports like full audit trail. Uh, so first, I will start to talk about uh, a couple of functions in the Palantir system in order to give you a picture of how you can work with the Palantir system. And the first uh, function I would like to mention is what we call a warning flag. Uh, here the system automatically checks for errors in the uploaded data to the system or for missing information and automatically warns both the person who is responsible for entering that information as well as the people uh, who are responsible for reviewing the information. Uh, and it also uh, minimizes administration because the people who review the information can automatically or with the click of a button send out email reminders to all people with outstanding uh, errors or warnings. Uh, the second function I would like to mention is the, uh, what we call the, the sign off function. So for each type of data in the system you can ask people to sign off that uh, all data has been updated and is complete. Uh, so in this case here it's for corporate information. And um, uh, if you have local reporters and uh, as well as central uh, people are responsible for reporting information, that could be very important to have this function. Uh, however, maybe you manage all information centrally, then maybe you're not interested in having a sign off. And then you can simply switch this function off. And that's one example of how the system is built flexible in order to adapt to your processes rather than the other way around. So if you switch it off, it will disappear from everywhere within the system. Um, I will now go into the first process here, the corporate information, and show you uh, a little more detail. Uh, and the first sub menu here is called entity. And uh, when I open this, uh, Submenu. I find a grid with all my uh, entities and uh, uh, a summary of all the information that has been collected in, in this section, corporate information. And this uh, grid I can use to screen out information I'm, I'm, or filter out information I'm interested in, and I can export it to Excel later on. And this process can be, uh, when we start uh, uh, or set up the system for a new customer, we help you to migrate all your entities and basic information into the solution. So going forward, you uh, update that information, add new entities and, and uh, new information uh, when they change. And that can be handled both centrally and locally, of course. I will enter edit mode for one of uh, the entities here. <coughs> and the first tab, it's called general. Here, here we collect information uh, that rarely changes. And we have a few other uh, tabs with other information. Uh, I will show you the second tab as well. 
uh, which is an example of how we collect historical information in the system. And this is the entity name history. And uh, here uh, the name is AB Palantir Sweden. And this is the present name of the company. Uh, but we also collect historical names. And that allows the system to go back in time and display uh, the exact structure and names and situation as of a date of your choosing, which is uh, quite important when, when you work with information over years, with changes over the years. I will now go to the second section, the BEPS 13 and transfer pricing section. Here, for the country by country reporting process, we have two more processes to complete before we can uh, create the XML file, and that is business activities and country by country information. Uh, and this uh, section also starts uh, with a sub menu called entities, where you will find all entities and an overview of all reporting in this entire section. And uh, I will enter reporting mode here to show you how you can uh, report business activities and country by country information. Either you can push this, this out to local reporters or you can manage it centrally. So here you uh, update your business activities and just tick the boxes that apply. And you can also collect country by country information. Um, and just to mention here, uh, the first part uh, you see here is the OECD amount that you're required to collect, but you can also choose to collect extra figures which are relevant in order to explain your group. And from all these uh, figures, you can calculate ratios and KPIs, which you can add to the system as well in order to explain your specific group. Uh, because perhaps these figures give more give rise to more questions than answers. Uh, however, maybe you would like to manage uh, the country by country uh, figure process uh, centrally. Uh, and you would like to uh, upload all data from your group accounting system instead of manually entering it to, to the Palantir system. And you can simply download an Excel uh, import template, which I'm downloading now. And uh, uh, most group accounting systems, they have an add-in into Excel, which you can use in order to add formula to cell, uh, in order to automatically retrieve data from your group accounting system. So now I open this file, and it will be populated with all my entities. And it's important to stress it will be populated with all my entities that should be reporting for this current reporting period. So the system will automatically pick, pick out those entities for you. And then you, you can either manually enter information for one uh, column here, uh, if you don't have the figures in the group accounting system, or you can just add formula from your group accounting system to automatically retrieve the figures. And this is something you only have to do once, and then you save this file and reuse it the following, following year in order to populate this file with new figures. And when you have uh, retrieved all figures, you simply save this file and go back to the Palantir system and upload it to, in order to populate the Palantir system with all uh, the figures. And then when you have all the uh, information in the Palantir system, you probably would like to review it. Uh, so I will show you one of our reports. And this is a, a report that again show all your entities and all the uploaded figures the CBRT figures, and they are all uh, displayed here uh, in uh, the reporting currency for each entity. However, I would like to show this in, in uh, the group currency, then I simply convert it to the group currency, uh, and then I would like to view it for tax jurisdiction. So now I can find all the details uh, for Austria, in this case, all the entities in Austria, and a sum for Austria, and this line is what will be included in the XML file and available for the tax authorities so you can know exactly what they will look at as well. So this is one way of reviewing the information. Uh, and when you're done reviewing all the information, you probably would like to create the XML file. So then I go to the admin section and I go to uh, table three and here I can add 
uh, information that I would like to include in table three. Maybe you have some explanations so you would like to uh, add for, for some kind of uh, risk or something you have identified. Uh, I will come back to that uh, when I talk about the analysis tool in the end. Uh, and when you have added um, the information to table three, uh, you want to create the XML file. And I go here to tax jurisdiction. And here you will find all jurisdictions where you have entity. And um, all jurisdictions will be selected from start. However, you could choose to create the XML file only for one country if you want to, or a number of countries of your choice as well. And then you can export them either to an Excel file, which displays table one, two, and three, or you can create the XML file. And in this case, I will create the XML file. Uh, and now it will be Finland because that is the setting for, for this uh, demo. And then I simply download the XML file. And then it, uh, it has been created here. <clears throat> and uh, now you simply save this file and um, uh, file it with your tax authority. And this XML file will also be stored in the Palantir system, so you can keep track of it over time. And that is quite important because now you know that the information you view in our different reports is exactly the same information that the tax authorities will look at. If they look at this file two years from now and come back with questions, you will be able to find that information very easily in the Palantir system and know that the information is, is correct. Uh, now I will go back here and show you our analytics tool. And this tool you can use in order to uh, identify risk in, in your figures and in your data. Uh, and the two um, important um, functions here are what we call the tax jurisdiction filters and entity filters. And um, with the tax jurisdiction filter, you can set threshold on the collected PYT figures, the extra figures you have uh, chosen to collect, and the ratios and KPIs, which you have chosen to add into the Palantir system. So if one tax jurisdiction uh, breaks that threshold, goes above or below or, or what you choose, then the system will automatically, automatically warn you that uh, you have a potential risk here. And you can break that down per business activity as well. And when, if you identify any risk here, you probably would like to uh, go down and do the same on an entity level to identify exactly which entities that might pose a risk. And perhaps when you look at the entities, you find one entity with huge tax losses. And then maybe you want to include that in table three as an explanation in order to mitigate questions. So I will show you how you add one, um, one filter here. I will add the threshold. And here in the drop down menu, I can choose between the collected C by C figures, the extra figures, and the, um, uh, the calculated ratios and KPIs. And in this case, I will choose total revenue per employee. And if that goes above 25,000, then I have a risk. I will get the data. And now I see it's four jurisdictions that break this uh, threshold, but I would like to break it down only for holding companies as well. And then I say, okay, it's three jurisdictions that break this uh, threshold. And let's say this is a very important check for me. So I will save this filter. And I make it as an indicator. And now when I go back to the dashboard and reload, this filter will uh, have been added to the tax jurisdiction filters here. And going forward, the system will automatically check all data that you upload to the system and warn you about any potential risk. And then you can go here and find out, okay, it's these three jurisdictions that pose a risk. And then you probably have added the same check up here to, to check your entities. 
Uh, you can also use our chart to identify risk. For instance, our line chart. When you have filed the, the second and third year, you can look for big swings uh, in your figures. And here you can choose between uh, all, all the CBT figures, extra figures, and ratios and KPIs as well. And you can break it down for business activity. And this is also something which the, the tax authorities will do. They will check for big swings between years. One other chart, chart which is uh, useful is the XY chart. Here you can choose what to have on the X axis and on the Y axis. And you can break it down also here for business activity. And then you can find outliers, which you might need to explain why is Sweden in this case so far from all other jurisdictions. So that's quite useful. And uh, we also have a world map. Here you can display where all your risks are in your group. And uh, all charts can be downloaded and saved as a picture to include in presentations. Uh, and lastly, I just would like to mention that we also have local and master file management in the solution and transactions management. Uh, and with that, I will hand over the work to Maria again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Uh, in case uh, you have anything left, please go to our website, uh, tpaglobal.com, or uh, you can contact us through uh, the contact details you see now on your screen. And I would like to uh, thank you for attending our webinar, and thank you, Peter, for uh, such an informative presentation.